picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. And now for something completely different. Welcome back to week two of the, well, I'm sure it'll be an abbreviated week two on this uh, Operation Omega Hopper. Uh, the reason you're not seeing me on camera this morning is I have not showered yet because I am waiting. I have uh, yard work to do this morning and it's, I figured it would be best to go ahead and wait till I finish that yard work and shower only once today. Um, so, before we do that, uh, I need to disassemble this and put it back into uh, hopper shape. The, sh the shape that I'm going to be using, uh, I am going to, uh, I'm going to keep it as the hopper, probably glue it in place as the hopper, and um, then we will have the, uh, and then I can paint up and put decals down as it, as it stands in that place. Now I did find some old decals, some generic decals from an old Robotech kit that I thought maybe uh, were in the right scale and it had multiples of things so like these he's got uh, threes and fours of some things which will help on this so let's first get this taken care of get it stripped down and uh, reformatted as the hopper okay here is the hopper um, I refig refigured all of the parts uh, there is some gluing now that I can do, now that I know that it's the final form that it's going to take. I can go ahead and do some uh, gluing to make it more su substantial. And um, I don't know whether I showed you this. This was the painted line I put over the uh, horrible, ugly, stupid uh, joint of the clear pieces. And going through the uh, decal sheet that I found... I found this red stripe that I may be able to repurpose for that to go over that to give a little bit of accent. Uh, certainly won't be using all of these, but uh, I think I found enough neat stuff that I can dress it up. Well, good morning, fellow housebounders. It is Tuesday, and it's time to finish up work on maybe finish up work today on the hopper. Now, what I've done uh, so far is I have reconfigured it to its final hopper mode. Uh, I have yet to decide whether I'm going to actually glue it in place or just allow it to exist this way. There are some parts I could glue and make more effective, but I'm, I'm kind of digging the like the flaps and stuff. I can leave those flappable. Um, these panels that are supposed to reverse and swap into the other wings, I think I'm going to touch the paint up on them and then glue those in place because there's no reason to retain their swappability. Uh, one thing I wanted to do this morning before I even turned the camera on was to test these decals. Now, these this is a decal sheet I've had since God was young and dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, this is from an old Robotech kit. And the old Robotech kit that I used this for, I, scra I didn't build. I used it to scratch build my Enterprise Transformer using those kits. Uh, but those are the decals. And what I like about it is there's a lot of three and fours. Um, symmetrical things like there's four of these chevrons there there are even numbers of things and I can make my decal symmetrical on the kit using those I also pulled out some other stuff just some random numbers and whatnot and some shapes and colors from the uh, box of parts and decals and if you don't have a box of parts and decals you really are doing yourself a disservice every time I get a kit that I don't need all the parts for um, that goes in the, that goes in the scrap uh, the scratch building box and I'll you end up with a lot of like uh, astronaut figures and, and landing gear if you're not building your ship with the landing gear and they give you the landing gear well those parts go into the uh, greebly box and they make good greeblies now these are the as an example these are the sheet this is the sheet of decals that came with the kit that i'm not going to be using because they're stickers they're ugly they do not work they give you bad they give you bad results and throw them away they're gone um, but getting back to this sheet of decals because they are so young they are so young i mean they're so old because they are so old you know, they're old enough that these are probably should have been in Roman numerals. That's how old these are. Um, have I told you that these decal sheets are old? I wanted to check to see whether or not they were going to be usable. So I took a couple of them, cut it out, I, and I 
attached them to the bottom of the wing here in an inconspicuous area just to make sure that they in fact were going to work before and there you see there's there's the decal there uh, that, that it was in fact going to work before I got my heart set on using them and it looks like they will uh, they've got carrier film going on inside which hopefully I can put a, uh, a dull coat over when I'm done and that will dispel a lot of that but now that I know that this decal sheet will work it's a happy time but there is some paint I need to touch up like this area here that had a fin that had uh, this fin as an example uh, coming up between it back when it was a shuttle and I painted it as a shuttle uh, I have to touch that paint and make it more uh, cover up that 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 bald spot where you just see primer there and uh, I have to do that around the majority of the rest of this kit now that I know which which faces and which aspects are going to be showing I could touch the paint up on them and I've gone through and I did a little bit of this yesterday I started playing with the detail on this top deck now that I have flipped it over and screwed it down so of course you've got the screw head here that needs to be painted I was working on the cockpit um, knowing that it's going to be visible now and there's a bit of overspray here that I need to take care of but uh, now that I now that I have sussed out the fact that that decal sheet will work, I'm happier. Oh, I don't know whether you saw this. This is that painted line I talked about. I had to I had to touch up, and I was happy to see that there is a nice red stripe decal. It's even got a curve to it that I can trim down and use in that spot. So that makes me happy. Um, so, uh, let's see. Let's uh, pull out the old airbrush and take care of some of these visible spots that I need to touch up before I can start laying decals down. Now, one thing I have noticed with these older decals, these really ancient ones, is that I need to leave them in the water for a lot longer than uh, is customary. I didn't think they had ever come off the backing paper, but rather than trying to force it, I'm sorry, I'm just playing with a little radar dish here. Um, rather than force it, I just let them soak for a little bit longer. Just test of patience, you know, we all, we're all we all having our patience tested. So uh, while I'm doing, while I'm waiting for that to soak, I'm just cutting out the uh, other ones that I think I want to use and kind of spacing them around to see. And I think if I stick to pretty much just this sheet, and maybe one or two numbers off of another sheet, then I will, uh, things will look more uniform. I don't want this to look like a ransom note full of different styles of decals. These all have a similar style and a similar uh, color palette that I think I can uh, make it look more intentional if I just use only the decals from this one sheet with perhaps a number, you know, a generic, fairly generic number, and like these, um, these Starfleet decals. I certainly don't want to use anything that's recognizably Starfleet unless I was trying to make this a Starfleet vehicle. Um, even down to the point of not using the, you know, the uh, monogram, microgram, or bold extended with the outline. I don't want to use this typeface because it's recognizable. I could, however, use the uh, Vulcan symbols here and yes you could tell this is from the Vulcan shuttle kit um, but I could use something like that and it not look like uh, that it was taken from a uh, completely different um, a completely different uh, universe so okay I'm gonna use this long red stripe here see if it has uh, finished soaking you soak, man. Okay, uh, finish soaking and see if I can wrap it around. And it looks like it might need a little bit more time in the water. And the more delicate the decal, the longer I am letting it suck, suck up the water. Okay, um, but now I'm just going to cut these. Now, see, I'm looking at this sheet now. And I'm seeing that those chevrons are actually two chevrons in a decal. I'm going to end up cutting those apart so that I can use the four chevrons in four different places. 
Okay, you can see this decal went on pretty well. I put a little bit of Solvacet on it because it needs to go over top of these two little bumps. But uh, it runs long, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'll trim that off when it's done. And I'm debating. I look at it just in place and I'm seeing how much stuff it actually covers up. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't put a number or something right, right in the center there. That'll also help disguise that uh, uh, bolt or that, the screw head so that's not as easy to see. And I'm thinking this shield might be real nice right there. Just right there. Yes. This just came to me as I was looking at the sheet. And I'm thinking that this shield might look mighty nice. I was looking for a place to put this. And I was thinking maybe down on the front here. But it's not it's it's too big for that. But I think it would look nice if I put it somewhere like this on the on the uh, canopy. So yeah, let me pop the canopy in place here and kind of map out where it would be the uh, least obtrusive to the detail that you see underneath. And yeah, that's going to, if I put it smack dab in the middle, now I need to decide which way it's going to show. I kind of like it going this way because then it follows the uh, pattern of the ship going back and it'll cover up that screw head. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, this is the kind of fun stuff that I'm discovering as I am working my way through it. I was also, what what I was initially working on was these uh, orange stripes and how nice those would look on the black, on against the black of the shuttle wings. Okay, so let me... There's a couple of uh, pieces on this sheet where you have smaller pieces and then one long one. I can cut that one right in the center and that'll just give me a nice orange stripe that is the correct width for the uh, shuttle wings. Yeah, I think this is going to turn out neat. Let me go ahead and trim that. Now I'll let that dry a little bit before I trim it. Well, I'll get them out. Before I do the close trim, I could do a uh, do an obvious trim here now and then do a close trim once it has dried, but that will get it the majority of it out of the way. Now that it's in place, I don't need the full length of it. Now it won't be bumping in the midst to something else when I'm while it's drying, and it just a dry Q-tip. I've got the uh, solver set over top of it, so I want to be careful not to. It's starting to melt and wrinkle up, and I don't want to uh, rip that in its fragile state. So uh, yeah, then I'll get off the canopy, and then I'll get on to some of these other spots here. I'm thinking. The obvious chevron is going to go there, 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 and there. Since I've got the four of them, I can put them all like that. Um, these ones that are outlines with numbers on them, those are going to go on the bottom because they'll show up better against the, uh, the lighter gray of the shuttle body. Okay, fun with decaling continues. Um, I really like how the orange is playing off of this black. It, it, it appeals to the old Steelers fan in me, so uh, I like that color combination. I did realize that when I'm, I'm thinking about it again, that I did not like the idea of all four of these chevrons pointing towards the front, because it was starting to look like an idiot's guide to, hey, that's the front of the ship. Uh, you know, you go, direction of travel, you go this way. So what I decided to do was, uh, and I'll make sure I'm trying to get these guys back on, uh, 
is uh, what I'm going to do as a as a slight nod to the fact that this used to be a transforming vehicle. I have decided I'm going to leave these chevrons on the front of the back engines, but I'm going to turn them around and point them this way on the uh, front engines as a nod to the fact that these two pieces used to join right in the center. So um, that will be your not so subtle hint that this is the seam where the two guys meet up with each other. Oh, come on. And one thing I've also noticed about these old, old, old Severial decals is um, they take a while. Not only do they take a while to separate from the paper, but they also, uh, once I put the, uh, the uh, solvacet on them, it takes a while for them to kind of set into the actual spot and not get moved around. So uh, what I'm going to do is I continue to do this top part and then flip it over and then do the bottom and then you know, dress up the sides a bit. I don't want to get too much junk on here. I don't want to make it look like, like I said, I don't want to make it look like a ransom note or a, uh, you know, a uh, 70s van with just, you know, tons of stuff all over it. So I've got to be a little bit more uh, cautious and uh, conservative in my decaling. I like the I like the look of those. See, like I said, with anything that's got this black outline, I want to save and put it on the top side. That is the lighter gray. Well, the top side of the shuttle, the bottom side of the ship, where it is uh, a lighter gray. Okay, I think I've got a good chunk of what I want to get done on the top done. I don't want to overdo it, and I want to spread these decals that I have out over. The area so I've got the ones that I really wanted to get down down and that's going to allow me to uh, I'm just looking at some of these scraps to make sure that I don't want to uh, keep them or not make sure there's a see if there's a decal on them or whether it's just a scrap of film some of these are printed in white and it makes it difficult to see against the blue paper but infinitely easier to see than it would be against white paper um, but I'm checking to see any more of these, uh, decals I want to put on the top. But I think I'm happy with what's on the top, at least for right now. And then I'll let this dry, go to lunch, come back and flip it over, do the bottom and then come around the sides and then fill in anything else that I'm thinking. Something like that. I really like how that's working and it's large enough that it's, puckering over top of these raised panels and I'm also finding that uh, these decals are giving me an excellent opportunity to cover up some ugly seam work uh, because you slap a decal over it and you, all of a sudden you don't see the ugly seam work anymore the ugly mismatched paint um, so yay that's a good thing okay let her dry come back to it in a bit let me pop the uh, oh I like the way that decal is forming over top of these little bumps Okay, so let's put that on top, and this will give me a better picture. Once I see all of it down, I can look at it and say, "Okay, you've got enough. You've got enough uh, pinstriping. You've got enough yellow. You've got enough work on the top, without it looking like a patchwork." So okay, I'm back. Uh, I just got out of the shower. I went outside for a few, couple of hours and did some yard work. A, the weather's great today. It's supposed to take a turn for the nasty tomorrow. B, it really needed done. And C, um, all of the above. Um, I find that uh, rather than killing myself and trying to do the whole yard at once, particularly at the beginning of the season when you're out of shape, like I am, I, although I keep maintaining the fact that round is a shape, um, I'm horribly out of shape for the season so the first mowing of the year is always hardest because you've got the thickest grass and the leaves and all the crap that's on the ground so I've been portioning it out over the last week or so doing uh, little bits of the yard at a time when the weather will permit and uh, so today was the day to do a little bit more of the front yard most notably the the ditch by the road because that's what was that's where the the tall grass was and really needed taken care of 
But I find that if I do that and I don't kill myself, that I can get more done. It gets, it gets me out of the house. I get some vitamin D. I get out in the sun. Um, and I sleep better at night because, you know, I've, I've pushed myself out, to use the old-fashioned phrase. I come in and I am completely bushed. So uh, I do a little bit of yard work every day. And it's not always the same, you know, some days it's, it's, it's clippings and some days it's just doing a straight mow and some days it's doing uh, uh, bagging up branches and stuff like that. So uh, did that and took a shower, got all clean again, and it also let the decals that were on the top uh, dry in and they are really puckering in nicely along those... Uh, seams for as old as these decals are they are working marvelously when it comes to adapting to the um solver set and i just noticed a little bit that i could stand the brush on this one again as far as making sure that it sinks down into grid lines and uh you know works fine over raised panels and stuff like that so yeah, and melt that a little bit more, but that's looking great. So there's the top, as far as it goes, and I'm working on the bottom now. And like I said, anything that's got that black panel line to it, that's what I'm choosing to put on the bottom here, so that this would show up better. And I've got a few more that I want to put on the bottom. And then we'll go to the sides and do the big numbers and things like that. Uh, I was very heartened to see the news about my mail, what's coming in the mail tomorrow, because I think it's going to be the next big project. And uh, more on that as it transpires. But uh, that'll also give me a reason to finish this guy up, knowing that I've got something exciting in the wings. So uh, let's get these guys down. Let's see. Um, flip this over. that out of the way for some reason the little number numbers the numbers the decal numbers they're coming right off but the uh, decals themselves are a bit more stubborn I suppose that's good but I really need to let these soak for good and long while before uh, they're ready to come up and I can send nice thing about having these ones with triangles on them makes it darn easy to align them with a center line because the triangle has its own point to it. And it, uh, if you put that on a seam, then you know you've aligned it with the center. Kind of idiot proof on the decals. Okay, now the 17, the 17 seems to be a recurring theme on this. I didn't mean to make that rhyme, sorry. Seven, the number 17 seems to be a recurring thing on this decal sheet. So I think this means it's going to be uh, number 17 in the fleet. Okay, uh, I think a couple of more touches and we're going to be done. Uh, what's going to happen now is that these decals are going to dry in all night. Tomorrow morning I will hit this whole thing with a clear coat. And then after the clear coat I want to go in and touch some silver accents that will uh, need to be on top of the clear coat so that they uh, don't lose their shiny luster as decal or as uh, silver paint can do once it is covered so uh, I just want to hit these uh, these bits here with a little bit of accent red Make them look like they might be uh, beacons or lights in a more perfect electrified world. So there. Um, there you go. Uh, let's see. I've got. I put a little decal on the on the uh, astronaut's helmet there. I've got two more here to go if I can get them into the right spots on either side of the helmet. I 
think they'll look nice. Oh yeah, those little circles turn out to be exactly the right size for the helmet. Let me get the other one on this side. Look at that. Very nice. There you go. Little dotage on the uh, helmet side. And uh, these big numerical decals are puckering nicely around the uh, contours of the kit. Oh, that! Look at that three. That three looks perfect. That's just perched. That's just perched down around us. Parched just to beat the band. That is just lovely. Let me see if I can push this forward down so that it looks as good. And now that the decals are on. Uh, these especially these numbers I can go over it one last time with a little bit of scorching and um, you know any uh, shadowing or shading that I want to do that I don't want to chip the decals we're not in the we're not in that that particular universe where the decals would be chipped like a Star Wars universe would be but um, we are in a spot now where we're just letting this thing dry until uh, I think until tomorrow Good morning folks. It is Wednesday and um, I just got done putting a flat coat on a, on top of all the decals and I just love a flat coat when it's done right man There ain't nothing sweeter for a model than a good flat coat Especially if you've got decals and especially if you've got decals that have carrier film on the insides of them uh, You know what I'm talking about where it's well. Here's a perfect example where you have something like this where let me see if I can do the fancy okay where you have something like this that has uh, carrier film on the inside of it and we'll zoom back out where you have carrier film on the inside of it and uh, it looks like a cheap decal all the time that you're putting it on there and all the time that it's drying and you're second guessing yourself and you're wondering geez that doesn't look all that good should I have done that it looks stupid and then you hit it you let it dry overnight and then you hit it with a nice flat coat and beautiful things happen to it all of the all the carrier film on the inside disappears and it looks just like a nicely painted very thin black line I love it uh, this is the best time so what I'm doing now is I am uh, lightly going over the kit and I'm picking out bits where I want there to be a high uh, almost a chrome effect all, a, a very high silver bright contrast and it's usually found on, like on the insides of pistons on landing gears uh, as an example uh, why did I do that I thought I'd put this up. anyway you take the uh, you just take a brush over the inside piston or the inside length of a piston and beautiful things happen so this is where I and I'm just hitting the other thing you do is you hit the, the the wear ends the wear edges of things like where the paint might chip off from repeated use and things like that so I'll take just the side of a brush just the side of it and you know drop some just do some dibbies some dibbies and some dabbies on the edge of things just to give an effect that maybe the paint got knocked off and it also helps if you have some scrapes or some uh, little bit of uh, I won't say paint ugliness but places where maybe the paint uh, scratched or it didn't quite cover you can go in and uh, hit hit it with a silver accent to make it look like it is a paint chip. Uh, on landing gear, I have found though, if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to paint like a part of it that's supposed to be a, an inside piston or something, it's best to make sure you're doing it symmetrically, so that it uh, carries the illusion better than if you were just do one side and, and leave it because then it looks like you 
were just doing it for the sake of adding some bright paint and it wasn't meant to look like it was supposed to be there so on uh, that's I try to do randomly throughout just to uh, give the impression like I said but if it's on something like a landing gear then I want to make sure that I uh, make it look more intentional and if there's like I did it on these little exposed pipes to um, make it look like maybe the pipe you know cause pipe uh, is fresh or maybe just freshly uh, replaced and uh, just hit the high spots it gives just uh, something for the eye to catch as you're looking across it but that's the kind of little niggly stuff that I'm doing today right before I am ready to uh, call it done so the last thing after I do these chrome highlights is I'll go in with a little bit of the oil spill uh, weathering and just decide where I'm on where I want to have like a fresh oil spill and those are the types of things that happen on top of the final coat say you've got your final coat of paint and you've got your decals all sealed in and you want to put there's two things that happen on top of I mean think of your car think of think of your car or a truck or any real vehicle it comes from the factory it's got the fresh coat of paint on it and if you've quit racing stripes or flames or whatever then that also happens on a clean car and then two things happen after that it gets dirty or rusty and uh, paint chips so those things happen on top of your finish that's why I want to make sure that I do the finish with some sort of you know logical thinking in mind that this is what actually happens you do um, your final paint coat and then if you're going to chip any of the paint or if you're going to show any road damage that would happen after now this this uh, wing up here is a natural to get a little bit of the silver on the leading edge here where it is because it's nothing but a big old target up here for uh, getting the paint knocked off and I'm not not going to be shy about that and I'm sorry maybe the third thing that happens is you're going to get a laser hit or you're going to get a um, which kind of goes I guess with the paint chipping you're going to get your body damage after it's been painted so um, something like that you would want to put on top of your flat coat the flat coat that is your your basic finish and then you take the things like you want wet oil spills or you want bright silver something that's that's not flat that's something that's going to give you a little bit of a sense of scale and a, a sense of detail on there that's you know basically what they used to call free production value it's free it, it's free production value to have uh, a little bit of damage on top of your final kit okay, i've had i've done the uh the chrome pass of the uh, highlights and now I'm doing a, a a a oil stains pass I had to check to see what the name of the weathering particular color I was using but I'm just plopping it down here where I think oil stains might accrue not too not too uh, scientific about this I'm just putting it down into the crevices where I think it might accumulate a little bit different than rust it's sort of like pre-rust you have the oil stains that will you know one day eventually turn to rust but for right now they are merely oil stains I feel like Bob Ross it's a happy little tree it's a happy little oil stain that just happens to live here now I can be very careful not to put anything in this particular area because I know that there is a canopy that covers that and that would keep it there might be some internal uh, oil stainage and stuff but it wouldn't get any outside damage on it so that's something to think about your protected areas and how well uh, your miscellaneous weathering would hit that um, I got to be careful here that I make sure that if I'm gonna put it on the top to let it drip it's gonna drip down the in the uh, uh, direction of gravity so uh, I'm gonna let this dry up for a good long while and then I'm gonna splash some petrol spills uh, this 
I like using petrol spills because it's it has a lot of the same uh, consistency as maybe a hydraulic spill which is good on uh, landing gear to put around the pistons and make them look oily the hydraulic cylinders so uh, let me see what what kind of stuff oh this the gun I've started putting some uh, highlighting on obviously in uh, gun metals but I'm just splashing some goo and grime in there as it would be naturally attracted to those areas so I'm just painting over the what I'm going to do is paint the landing gear and then set it back upright and let that drip down in the direction of the gravity so I need to get a quick coat on here and then reset it upright and let the uh, let the spills happen where they may and here it is the finish the final the hopper number 17 um, and I just realized how coincidental that was I wasn't expecting that I, that's just taken off of a an old enterprise uh, decal sheet and here it is 1017 when I've got other instances of 17 all over the kit of course I put the big one up front here and then there's the one on the wing <laughs> interesting wasn't trying to do that I just noticed it but here it is it's done it's uh, I won't exactly call it uh, you know a silk purse out of a sow's ear but I think this uh, just deciding that it's going to be a hopper and not uh, a shuttle or not a shuttle and a crawler um, dedicating it to the one thing is better it's not uh, it's not it's not it's not a transformer it's not as well designed in either mode that you can get past the transformation of it would have been a great shuttle would have been a great with a carrier would have been a great hopper as a combined thing not so much and that's uh, my that's my story and I'm sticking to it I'm sorry I'm kind of distracted I'm cleaning up while I'm at it here uh, but there you go see the happy little pilot in here I've been tearing the place apart this morning because I can't find the the uh, silver pinstripe tape that I have I have some metallic pinstripe tape laying around here and I know it's going to be a question as soon as I stop looking for it I'm going to find it um, but I wanted to put a metallic pinstripe just around this joint here where the two pieces of the canopy meet uh, this canopy is not glued down, so if you wanted to get in there and look at uh, the captain, you can. But uh, I wanted to put something to finish this edge, and I thought that silver pinstripe tape would be perfect for it. But it is uh, cleverly hiding from me, so I can't find it. So uh, we have another shelf sitter, and it is ready to go. And that's going to do it for this week's week and a half build of the Hopper seven, Hopper number 17. Not to be real, not to be confused with Mambo number 5. This is Hopper 17. And it looks kind of like an insect with the uh, antennas bent back like that. It does look kind of uh, grasshopper-ish. So that maybe plays into the, the, the uh, ship on a subconscious level. Let me see if I can open up. Yep, there's the gun bay. There we go. Okay. I think we'll leave that open. But yeah, there's your hopper. And um, so, uh, we put this on the shelf, but we start on something new next time. I've got a quick two-day project to finish out this week, so I'll still I'll put this up today's Wednesday. I'll put this up today, and then... I'll have something else for Friday that's really quick and easy. It's something I've had kicking around the stash for nigh on a millennia. Um, so I can get that quick. And then we can start another big project next week. The big project we're going to start next week, it arrived uh, today. And it was a huge brown box. And you know what that means. It means it's a garage kit. And uh, wait do you see what it is. And it meets the three criteria. It is huge. It is something I've never done before. I'm interested in doing. 
Uh, but I won't have to keep and I, I, somebody is stupid enough to pay me to do it because I don't have to keep it once I'm done. I have no room for it. Uh, but they've met my criteria. That is, they will not whine about what, how I'm doing it. They will not whine about what color I'm painting it. And they have made provisions to come pick it up when it is done. Um, so there. Uh, and we'll, more about that next week. But uh, until the next time we get together, you be good. You be good to each other. Be kind. That's the best thing I can say. We're all in this together. We're all trapped in our house. Hey, if the worst, if the worst sacrifice that you have to do in your life is to stay home with your family and uh, and not and the worst thing that they're asking you to do is not to go outside if you don't have to or not to go out in public yes you can go outside we haven't quite reached that yet but if you don't have to go out in public don't uh that's you know compare that to uh some of the sacrifices that our uh, generations before you have given up so uh it ain't nothing in the long run so be good be good to each other Build a model, pull something out of the stash, spend some time with your family, and we'll see you here pretty darn soon, actually. Like I said, this is Wednesday, and I'll be doing this again on Friday, so uh, we'll be right back. Have a good one.